But first, it's the oldest political trick in the book. When you're in trouble, blame the other side. And on this, Labor is audacious. We are working together to reform a department that was left in an absolute mess by the Leader of the Opposition. The mess left by the Leader of the Opposition left in a catastrophic mess by the Leader of the Opposition. NZYQ would not even have been here were it not for the incompetence of the Leader of the Opposition. Order. I make no apologies for doing everything I could to get this person Order. out of the country. I contrast that with the Leader of the Opposition because he's the reason that NZYQ was here to begin with. Now, make no mistake, this border mess is Labor's fault. Labor's fault originally for allowing into the country some 50,000 illegal arrivals by boat under Kevin Rudd and then Julia Gillard. And now under Anthony Albanese for failing to adequately deal with the High Court's demand that just one foreign criminal be released from detention. And instead they panicked letting out all 149 into the community with no plan at all about how to keep Australians safe. Since then, we've had murderers, rapists, violent criminals and pedophiles out on the street, a government unwilling to disclose where they are, and now these criminals refusing to subject themselves to monitoring and using taxpayer dollars via activists to challenge their ankle bracelets through the courts. But because the opposition has failed to roll over to the government's latest plan to make it a criminal offence not to cooperate with attempted repatriation, the whole mess is somehow Peter Dutton's fault. In a panicked press conference today, the first of many months that she's fronted the camera, Claire O'Neill, joined by the hapless Andrew Giles, two of the government's worst ministers, well, they managed to accuse the opposition of playing politics at least a dozen times. Peter Dutton, Dr No himself, comes forward and plays political games, an opposition that continues to play politics. Peter Dutton always plays politics. They've chosen once again to play politics. Tries to play politics. And we saw that this week. And that is because they are playing politics. Like performing seals, aren't they? Reading out the talking points written by the Prime Minister's office. Now, hang on. <laughs> This is a government that only gave the opposition the draft legislation at half past seven yesterday morning. But they had the document printed last Friday. Last Friday. So who's playing politics asking the opposition to come to a decision just about an hour or so before it's launched into the parliament or a government or a government that could have taken the opposition into their confidence last week and given Dutton and his team the weekend to consider the bill, to ask detailed questions and perhaps even suggest improvements. Now, as it happens, the opposition worked with the government to get the latest foreign criminals bill through the House of Representatives, but then voted with a crossbench to have a proper inquiry. Not just those two hours last night, meaning the legislation will then be voted on in budget week, about six weeks away. Now, what's wrong with that? Especially as ministers and officials were adamant last night that the latest legislation would make no difference to any foreign detainee, any case currently before the courts. I'm just interested if this legislation is designed uh, to deal with issues that are likely to arise um, from ASF 17, the upcoming matter in the High Court. Uh, the legislation doesn't deal with... The, the, the matter before the High Court is whether or not um, people who are remain in immigration detention um, for a protracted period of time where they're not cooperating with removal, whether they're affected by the NZYQ decision. This, the passage of this legislation or not has no relevance to the outcome of that High Court case. That the bill does not respond to the proceedings currently before the High Court in relation to ASF 17? Does not respond to the points of law that are being tested in ASF 17. That's Michaela Cash there, of course, in those hearings last night. She'll join us on the show a little uh, later in the program. But having spent years to demonise Peter Dutton as a thug, as a brute, this latest tactic that he's somehow soft on border protection, I mean, that verges on farcical. Today, Minister O'Neill said it was the coalition that somehow had driven border protection into a ditch. Peter Dutton drove this system into a ditch and then walked away. Now we are having to go through a methodical process of fixing each aspect of this system. 
ditch. Good Lord, I'd take Dutton's ditch over her absolute train wreck handling of border protection. But does anyone honestly think that the party that stopped the boats is somehow to blame for the boat people that Labor let in? I mean, the desperation, the hysteria that's creeping into ministerial language, that's a sign of a government that's losing control. Today in the parliament, O'Neill sounded shrill. But never mind the government's problems with hundreds of foreign criminals let loose into the community. Who can forget there's also Australia's out-of-control lawful immigration, currently running at well over half a million people a year, which explains our housing crisis. And the live reality, too, of a per capita recession, given we've had four quarters now with negative growth per person. This week, we've had a slight step back from the new vehicle emissions rules that will make families and tradies driving utes and four-wheel drives, subsidise those with money in their pocket to drive Teslas, but no one's really happy, are they? There's increasing concern from business that Labor's renewable energy push means even more jobs will head offshore and unreliable power in Australia is a thing of the past, where it used to be reliable and cheap. I mean, Labor's pre-election promise to cut your power bills by $275, forget that. There's growing alarm too amongst people of faith that the government's planning to make it impossible for them to keep their faith-based schools. Even the NDIS that Labor regards as some sort of trophy achievement, well, that's got costs exploding, rorts exploding, and almost no consensus amongst Labor premiers about a fair income solution. Now, tomorrow night, Labor MPs will leave Canberra thoroughly demoralised. They're down in the polls. Even the PM's popularity is taking a beating. And they're unable to point to any real achievements as they ebb closer and closer to the next election. Labor strategists will be looking to the May budget for a reset. We heard about that reset over Christmas, but it's never, never materialised. But as they discovered with those stage three tax cuts, it's hard to buy your way out of political trouble, particularly when you've got a lie to try and do it.